Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining us here with BachelorNation.com. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for having me. Always and happy I, to talk. I know you miss me. We talk all the time for Bachelor Happy Hour Golden Hour. So I do is- miss I do miss you. And, and this is a little bit different topic. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, we are here today celebrating Pride Month and Bachelor Nation during Pride Month. And I know you've talked about it a lot on the Golden Hour podcast, but not so much on the show. So fans might not know that Pride is really important to you and your family. Your son is a part of the LGBTQ plus community. So what does Pride mean to you and your family broadly? Broadly, it means uh, for us, it's acceptance of people who they are. Um, it, it, no judgment, uh, just celebrating, really celebrating people, whatever color they are, their sexual orientation. We just as a family, um, my oldest son is gay. Um, he came out when he was in ninth grade and it was sort of a humorous story. Um, we the kids, all three of my children were at piano lessons and um I went into my son's backpack to get some note paper for my daughter to do some homework. And I saw all this, um, these books, gay poetry um, and, you know, how to handle it. It was gay literature. Are you gay? And he looked at me horror stricken because, you know, he was just surprised that I came out with it. And that's literally how he came out. He said he was going to tell me, um, but he was working up to it. And and to be honest, um, I told him at the time that I love my children. My husband and I are, no matter what they are, who they are, however they identify, we love them. And the fact that he was nervous, but my son uh, about coming out was was sort of upsetting to me. However, he is 40, almost 43, and coming out then was different than coming out now. Um, It's a much easier time, uh, I think, to be part of that community. Um, and, And I'm just proud of him. He's a great guy. And it's it's you know, it's just it's not even a label. He's my son. And oh, and by the way, he happens to be gay. I love that. What was your experience like for you and your husband um, raising a child who is a member of the LGBTQ plus community? Was there any like backlash? Because like you said, it was a different time and you're a part of the baby boomer generation. Mm -hmm. Was there challenges within your community, within your family? Because you said you were both so accepting and yeah, you know, everyone has to come out on their own time and whether he was ready, you know, the conversation happened in your family. So how did you kind of advocate for him or what was that like raising him? Well, he was relatively young, ninth grader. I was, it was, you know, he was pretty young in retrospect after he came out, there were so many signs um, that, that we just, you know, didn't pay attention to because we really didn't care. Um, But I think that some of my friends, um, I was afraid to tell my family initially, um, I didn't know how he would be judged by my family from yet, you know, yet an older generation, but everyone just embraced him. But he's, my son is kind and he's really smart. And um, they were just like, great. You know, we just, there was nothing. It's like saying, do you love your child differently because they have blonde hair? It's, it's just an attribute. It's characteristic. It doesn't, nothing defines him. Yeah, I know. And it's, I I completely agree with you. And I think it's, it's tough because while it is better today than it was, you know, 30 years ago or so, there are still so many families that aren't accepting and communities that aren't accepting. So do you have advice for maybe someone of your generation whose kid comes to them and they're having a hard time kind of finding that acceptance? Well, you're saying having trouble finding acceptance in their friend group or in even themselves, both, you know, like, you know, I think your child. Yeah. I think the queer community today um, is, is much more, open, no pun intended, Uh, you know, just people are out. Uh, People are so much more accepting today. And I think that if if 
um, a child is struggling with their identity, I think it's great to find groups for, you know, like anything else, community, building community is what's important. And um, I think kids need to find safe spaces just like adults do where they're accepted for who they are um, and they can be their authentic selves without judgment. So my advice would be um, put them in situations where they're going to be successful, help them celebrate their identity. Don't make it don't make it. Um, something that a child would feel it's wrong. You know, there are some people who think God did not create, you you know, you get that sort of that aspect sometimes. Um, I chose with my family, my, we just don't go down that road. Um, And I would say families who struggle with it, that's a struggle that if the parents are struggling, that is a struggle they need to work on. That's not the child's struggle. That's your struggle. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good way to put it. It's not, you know, it's not their journey to go on. It's your journey of acceptance. What is what does Pride Month mean to you as an ally, as someone who maybe isn't necessarily a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but is so closely tied to it? I, you know, I love that every uh, we just came off of mental health. May was mental health month. And um, that's near and dear topic to me as well. Um, and so we're in Pride Month now. And to be able to celebrate, I've walked in many pride parades. I've walked them in, in, in Houston. I've walked one in Toronto, Canada with my sister. I think There are so many things in this world, so many issues, so many tough things that we deal with. I love that we have a whole month to celebrate diversity in all its forms. Yeah, I agree. It's so special. Pride is just so joyful. Do you think that that your allyship to the LGBTQ plus community has changed because of your son's coming out? Or do you feel like that's always just been a part of who you are? You know, I, I have to be honest, um, I prior to me, to my son coming out, I've always had a lot of friends in the in the uh, LGBTQ plus community. Um, and uh, so honestly, it just has enriched my life. Um, I didn't it, it I I. I, I'm stub, I'm st- uh, struggling because to me, it's just like saying I like white or blue. It's not it's not it's it's just another aspect of people. And I just think it's a wonderful um, pride is a joyous time where people can celebrate being who they are. And I think anyone who doesn't needs to get on board. Mm, yeah. I'm not I'm not really I'm not really sympathetic um, to people um who who don't celebrate every every kind of person that we have in this world celebrate yeah, i agree with you how have you like educated yourself you know i imagine when your son was in ninth grade and he came out to you did you like educate yourself or the pe- people in your family or those around you at that time on like lgbtq plus issues or how do you stay on top of that stuff um as a parent of someone in the community well you know, it's it was so many years ago now. Um, I, I I just wanted to make sure. I remember asking him. He went to a support group, and I remember saying to him, um, "You know, don't put don't be around people who don't believe in you. You need you believe in yourself. We believe in you. Um, go, go and live your life. You know, this is not it's this is not a handicap. This is part of who you are." And so. Uh, I, educating myself. I think the one thing that um, my son's dad and I talked about was um, how other people might not be kind to him. And back then, I remember telling him when he was applying to colleges um, and his first job that he needed to be mindful that not everyone supports the LGBTQ plus community. And so um, sometimes, and he did, he was very um, circumspect about it. In retrospect, oh, I, I can't say that I would have him do anything different in that time. Now, now um, I would tell him to scream it from the rooftop when he was applying to school. But there, back in those days, there were people that just 
didn't want to hear about it. Sort of the, you know, don't tell that that regime. Uh, and I and I don't subscribe to that. I do remember, though, um, when he told me I, I was since he's my firstborn, I remember thinking, oh, I'm never going to get a grandchild. Uh, I remember thinking that, a blo- you know, blood grandchild. Um, he he does currently have a partner and and is not interested in having children. And frankly, if he had been heterosexual, he wouldn't be interested in having children. That's just not his thing. So, I, again, that's just another example of being gay is just being gay. It's not it's not. Uh, a good parent, bad parent. I have lots of friends who have adopted kids and their kids are living the same rich life that my kids lived. Totally. They just happen to have two moms or two dads. Yeah. And there's so many ways to have families now. Like I know Colton, right. the bachelor is doing reciprocal yes, doing yes. IVF with the surrogate. A lot of um, two mom families do reciprocal IVF. There's yeah. lots of different ways. Yeah. It's so cool. And it's, it is so unique. Um to each kid. And I think it's such a good reminder that like you can't have, or, you know, don't have children if you can't love them unconditionally. That's right. It's you know, unconditional and- love. And yes. I love that we have normalized um, this conversation uh, because it wasn't when my son was young, yeah. it wasn't. Um, and, you know, people would point at him initially and say, you're different, but, and yeah, he's different because he's not the same as everybody else. Guess what? You're not, I'm not, we're all unique. And that's what pride's about is celebrating our uniqueness. And um, I think that, that I think that the, that this community um it's high time. I'm so glad that we're just moving, propelling, you know, catapulting forward with acceptance because that's what it should have been all along. Agreed. And even amid all the acceptance, there is still so much, you know, turmoil in the LGBTQ plus community and the bills that have been passed against them and whatnot. So what is your, you know, words of wisdom for bachelor nation fans who maybe like want to be better allies to the LGBTQ plus community? I think get out and learn about the community, get out and meet people that are in that community, ask them questions, talk to them about what's important to them. You're going to find out that there's a lot of intersection in this, in this conversation. Um, Just get out and support this community. When, you know, when you see something, say something. Um, If, uh, if someone I don't hear it as much anymore, Um, but I, in my lifetime, would hear people make slurs about the gay community. And boy, I jumped all over them. And these are people that I didn't know. I just would stop them right short and say, um, I have a gay son and he's great. And you would love him if you knew him. Um, So I think that kind of thing is we have to take a stand. We have to. If you see something, you have to say something. If you see injustice, you got to speak up about it. I love that. I think that's such good advice because I think so often people are quick to judge when they don't know somebody. It's so much easier when you know somebody, you know, as a member of this community that you can kind of put a face to a name and be like, like you said, you were about raising kind humans. It had nothing to do with, you know, who they dated or what they were like. It was like, I just want to raise good people. And right. Way. And I, uh, I raised all three of my kids um, with the same, with the same uh, idea, which is be a good human. You have been blessed with a good education two loving parents give back to your community. I didn't say you're gay. You know, you're a girl. You're a, I, that's, it just was never part of our conversation ever. Um, And so I think that we, you know, the old, we've come a long way, baby. We still have a ways to go. Um, uh, Again, some of the legislation that we have um, is, is unfortunately contrary to, to moving this uh, forward, but I just think it's, you know, step-by-step we're, we're in a better place today than we were a year ago. And, and if, if you just look at the numbers of parades, for example, and the people marching in them, it's 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 grown every year. And I think sometimes it's ignorance. People don't know. And when they learn what this community is about, education sets you free. 
Totally. Well, I appreciate you sharing and sharing a little bit more about your family because I know so many people from your generation, generations to follow and et cetera, will all like learn from you and the experience you've had and how accepting you've been of your family and how you just love your kids for your kids. So yep. appreciate love. You. That is the, that is the answer. Love. You're right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Kathy. Take care.